this is Dear Direct with the Tom Joyner Foundation, and I'm talking to uh, M. Christopher Brown II, who is the 18th president of Alcorn University. How are you? Good morning. Good to be here. Now, you, as I understand, are one of the youngest presidents um, or HBCU presidents. So what is that, you know, what are the pros and cons of that? The the pro is that I'm, I still have a fair amount of energy, so I'm not completely exhausted uh, from a long, long career. Uh, the uh, the con is uh, that I have a long time to work. You know, I have a number of colleagues who I talk to uh, who are getting close to retirement or the like, uh, and it's like, oh, gosh, I'm just starting off on the track. You've been involved in both, you know, public and private HBCUs. What are the challenges uh, facing uh, both entities at this point, and, and, and what do you think are some of the solutions? I think uh, the, 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 the challenges are manifold. Uh, certainly, uh, federal financial aid has become a huge one all across the country. Uh, to alumni uh, giving and ability to give, you know, the, when we look at the uh, – the corporate ranks, you know, the you know the higher you are in the corporate ranks, the greater your disposable income, uh, and we've just not traditionally had a lot of people in the corporate ranks, uh, so that limits the number of people we can tap with disposable income, uh, and so that's hampered us uh, a bit as a as a cohort of institutions, and I think there's a, sort of a third challenge which is mission identity issues, hmm. uh, both within uh, our campuses, within our alumni and stakeholder communities, and within the larger public. People are really grasping uh, and, and grappling with trying to define and redefine these institutions in the 21st century. So from a defining perspective, give me a sense of um, how you would define uh, Alcorn and you know, what you think some of the, the strongest academic programs are. Right. Well, we are, uh, without question, the nation's first public, historically black land-grant institution, founded in 1871. Uh, we were founded uh, long before the Second Moral Act of 1890, where most of your uh, black land grants are created. Uh, and so we've been around a long time. Uh, we have the great distinction of having our first president be Hiram Revels, who resigned from the U.S. Senate, the first black U.S. senator, resigned to be our first president. Uh, we've got great alums like Alex Haley and uh, Medgar Evers and, of course, uh, athletes like Steve McNair and Donald Driver. And so there, there's sort of a panoply, a rich history of what the institution has been. Uh, what is really exciting is that we continue to put out great students. You know, the valedictorian, unbelievably, the last two years, the valedictorian have been men. Uh, two years ago, he had a 4.0. He's in grad school at uh, Ole Miss. Uh, last year uh, was a 3.97 in mathematics, pure math. Uh, he's in grad school uh, in Texas. Uh, and so I think great, great things are happening here. Our core academic programs remain agriculture. We're land-grant school and all of its related uh, industries, which include robotics and and automotive uh, manufacturing. Uh, we also uh, do a lot of pre-professions, pre-law, pre-dentistry, pre-med, uh, as well as social services like education, social work, and criminal justice. And so those are really the core of our academic program. What's the update on what's going on with the so, merger? I, I think the, the, the great thing is in Mississippi, they, they had those conversations early on before I arrived, uh, but since um, those conversations began, there's been a whole lot of data that came to the table. Uh, and so uh, many individuals now understand that uh, there are some economies of scale that we can theorize when we talk about merging institutions. But there are also uh, challenges like geographic distance uh, around physical plant, around duplication of academic programs. Right. And so, uh, so theoretically, 